Hello everyone, this is Sarah and welcome to my crochet channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a dog collar, a bracelet, or maybe a choker. It's going to be lots of fun and it's a perfect summertime project. We're going to be working with beads today. This one is a dog collar. It's made with worsted weight number four acrylic yarn and wooden beads. This one is made from hemp or jute and it's made with my homemade beads that I made with polymer clay. And I'll talk to you a little bit more about the different kinds of yarns and things that you can use when we get a little farther on in the project. Now you can find the pattern on my blog and you can find that blog link down in the notes underneath this video. So what you're going to need is some sort of yarn <laughs> to crochet with. Now I've got some options here that you can use. Now this is what we call jute or hemp and I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. It was only three dollars and ninety nine cents and you get a lot 525 feet and it doesn't take very much to make a bracelet or a dog collar or even a choker for that matter. And this is what we're going to be working with today. Now if you're a little bit intimidated by jute there are two other options that you can use. You can use acrylic worsted weight number four yarn which is this one and of course you can use any color you want. I was just trying to stay with some of the beige-ish colors so that it would look a little bit more like maybe leather or jute. And then this is cotton yarn. You can use it also. It works just fine for this project no matter whether you're making a dog collar, a bracelet, or a choker for yourself. Alright, so you, there's some options for you to choose from. You're also going to need about 15 to 20 beads depending on how big of a project you're making. If you're making it for a small dog, you don't need as many beads as say a big dog or maybe a choker for yourself. Alright, now these beads are 15 millimeter. They're wooden beads. I also purchased them at Hobby Lobby. There were only $1.99 and you get 24 beads. So you can make quite a few projects with these. They also have a bag like this that's all neutral colors of beiges and browns that are not brights. You can also use the big pony beads or any beads that you have on hand because remember the other one I made, I used my own polymer clay beads that I made. The main thing you need to remember is that the hole in the bead needs to be big enough to get your jute or yarn through. All right, the other thing you're going to need is an H hook and this H hook is a five millimeter H hook. You're also going to need a needle that has a big enough eye to get your jute or yarn through but also can pass easily through the beads that you're using. Alrighty, you're going to need your scissors of course and then the last thing you're going to need is a tape measure because you'll need to measure your wrist or your neck or your dog's neck. So gather up your supplies and we'll get busy on this fun summer project. The first thing that you need to do to get started on your project is measure what you're making. If you're making a dog collar, measure your dog's neck. If you're making um, a choker for yourself, you'll need to measure your own neck. I'm going to make a bracelet today, so I'm going to measure my wrist and it measures just a little over six inches and then I'm going to add an extra inch. So we're going to say that my wrist is seven inches because I want my bracelet to kind of dangle. So I have a seven inch wrist or I'm going to make my bracelet seven inches. And what you need to do is you need to make three chains per inch plus one. For instance, I'm making a seven inch bracelet. So three times seven is 21 and then I need to do one additional chain. So I need to do 22 chains. If you've decided to work with the jute or the hemp, I want to tell you a couple of things that I learned. Number one, it's really difficult to move from the inside. You're going to have to work from the outside of your spool if it's like this. Now hemp also comes in a spool like this and of course you'll have to use the outside. 
Another thing is the way that it is treated, it's really difficult for it to come off easily. And so what I do is I pull a quite a bit off, just go ahead and unwind a little bit and just set it down <clears throat> and then I'll work through it. And you'll notice my workspace gets a little bit dusty and that's because of the texture of the hemp or the jute that we're working with. The first thing that we need to do is put the beads on first. So we're going to thread our jute or yarn onto our needle. And then we're gonna put on some beads. Now I'm making a seven inch bracelet and I always put a couple extra beads on just in case I might need them at the end and you can always just push them forward and it's not gonna matter. So I chose these beads from my colors and we're just going to put them on And we'll be sliding them forward as we work until we need them. Let's see. Green, blue. No, I'm going to do pink. There we go. So I have a few extra beads just in case. Roughly, I say that you're going to need a bead every three stitches because that's where we're going to put them on. All right. So we're going to put those on. And as we work, we'll push them forward. So now we have our beads onto our yarn and we're ready to get started crocheting. Now, just to repeat, I'm making a seven inch bracelet. So I need to chain 22 chains because three times seven is 21 plus one extra chain. Now, it's important when you're working with jute that you crochet just a little bit loose. It doesn't have any stretch to it at all. And so, and it can be a little, little bit intimidating until you're used to it. But this is a great project to give it a try. There's my slip knot. And I'm going to chain my 22 chains. Now you'll see that I'm chaining loosely. And if you have trouble chaining loosely, you can always go up a hook size or two if it makes you feel more comfortable. It will twist a little on you when you're working with jute. Keep that in mind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three. Push your beads forward. <laughs> Right, here's 10, 11, 12. So that's 12 and 10. And at this point, I look at my bracelet. I put it on my arm to see if it's going to fit. Looks like a great fit. And then I get started. All right. So now we have our chain. And it doesn't matter what size you're making. Make sure that you do three chains per inch plus one extra chain. All right. We're going to begin in the second chain from the hook. That's why we needed that extra chain. And we're going to stitch a row of single crochets. And again, you want to stitch just a little bit loose. Go in the chain, pull up a loop, yarn over, and go through both chains. Now this is a great beginner project to do with your kids. I think both boys and girls would love this and they can do beads that they love. You can also do those alphabet beads that are a lot of fun and whatever they're into. There's lots of fun shaped beads, stars and hearts and butterflies and footballs and basketballs. There's tons. Hobby Lobby has a whole four foot section of just beads. So I'm just doing a row of single crochet across. The next row is where we're going to incorporate our beads in, and it's a lot of fun, and it's also super easy. And you'll notice as I'm working with the jute, it's a little curly. Now, if you're using cotton yarn or worsted weight yarn, it's not going to be this curly. It's just the nature of the jute that you use. It's just the way it's treated, and it's stiff and a little fuzzy, but it's okay. Now, because I chained 22, I started single crocheting in the second chain from the hook. I will end up with 21 
single crochets. <laughs> my beads were hitting my bowl over there. All right, so I'm in my last single crochet. I'm going to chain one and turn. All right, we did our chain one and we're going to turn. We're going to single crochet in the first three stitches. Our chain one here does not count as a stitch, so we'll go right in that first single crochet and single crochet three stitches, one in each of the next three. One, two, and three. Now we're going to pull our first bead forward. We'll push it to the front and then we'll just single crochet right in that next stitch. And that bead's gonna sit right on that side. So basically when we're doing this row, we're crocheting across the back and pushing the beads to the front. All right, so there's my next single crochet. So I'm going to single crochet in the next two. There we go. One. Two. I'm going to pull another bead up. There we go. And then I'll single crochet in the next three. So basically we're doing three single crochets, pulling a bead up, and three single crochets. That's the pattern that I have done. Now if you want your beads closer together, you can do that and by uh, doing less stitches between. And if you want your beads farther apart, you can do that by making more single crochets in between your beads. That's why I said this pattern, this project is so versatile because you can use different types of yarns or string and you can use different types of beads and you can make it however you want by making it different sizes. There we go. And yes, jute is a little bit stiff and it's a little bit hard to work with, but I sure love the way that it looks. All right, so there's three stitches. I'm gonna pull my next bead up and single crochet in the next three. All right, and then I'm gonna show you what it looks like on the front, because I've been working on the back and pulling those beads forward. I do recommend that you use an aluminum or metal type hook that's strong if you're using jute or you'll break your plastic ones. All right, here's the other side. Three single crochets and we added a bead, three add a bead, three add a bead, three add a bead. And see, so you can make it when you're making something maybe that's longer, you can put more single crochets in between your beads. Or if you want them closer together, move your beads like between two or one. That's what I mean, it's totally versatile. All right, so we did those three. Let me pull up another bead. And then I'm just going to single crochet in those last three. Now you'll notice that I've got some extra beads on my jute. There we go. But don't worry about those. Just if you put on more beads, it's better to have more than not enough. And if you put on a lot of extra beads, just push them forward and we'll just keep right on working. All right, chain one and turn. So that's what my bracelet's going to look like. But we're going to put another row of single crochet across. So we'll go right in that first stitch and just place one single crochet in each, there we go, <laughs> in each single crochet across. And that's gonna make our row of beads right in the center of our bracelet or our dog collar, or our own choker. And wouldn't this make a lovely belt? A strap for a purse? Or you could even do the top part of the trim of a purse in this jute, and then do the rest of it in regular yarn. See, lots of fun and great possibilities when you learn how to add beads. So I'm just single crocheting across this row. Oop, <laughs> that tail in the way there. I'm gonna pull out some more jute here. There we go. It rolled for me good. Sometimes it doesn't 
Jute is a little tricky to work with, but don't, oh, please don't be intimidated. Give it a try. It's really, really worth it. Alrighty, so I'm in that last single crochet. I'm going to make a little bit bigger loop there and push those beads forward so you can see. So there's the bracelet itself. Now how do we put it on? What we're going to do is we're going to turn it this way and put the two ends together. And I'm going to make a chain one. We're going to put the two ends together just like we would say a headband. We'll go through the loop on this side and the loop on this side. And it might be snug when you're working with the jute. Pull it through and slip stitch. Then we'll go to the end of that next row and this row. Pull it through and make a slip stitch. And we'll do it one more time. And then I'm going to show you something you can do with those beads that are left on your bracelet. Because we have those extra ones, right? We didn't need them. And I always say, like, uh, you know, it's, it's better to have too many beads than not enough and have a few extra hanging there. All right. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to cut our yarn. <clears throat> and I'll show you what we can do with those extra beads in just a second. We're going to tie this off. And then we're going to do a no-no. <laughs> we're going to tie a knot. Now, if you're worried that that knot's going to come undone, you can add a dab of Freight Check or fabric glue on there or maybe E6000 um, if you're working with the jute. Okay, so here's the bracelet. You could put them together. You need your needle for this one. But we're just adding a little extra something to the end of our bracelet. Now, I don't recommend that you do this when you're making a dog collar because that's something that the dogs can just chew on. So we won't do it for that, but we'll do it for a bracelet or maybe the choker. And then we're going to just tie this in a knot. And that's just got a little dangle thing on there. It's just if you want to, you don't have to, of course. You can just cut it and leave it be. There we go. So now my bracelet has just a little dangle if I want it on there. You don't have to. And it will stretch a little. See how it's stretching when I put it on? There we go. And isn't that cool? I just love it. It's a great summertime project. And it's also a great way that if your child is wanting to learn or anybody is wanting to learn how to crochet, you can do this in your worsted weight yarn just like this one over here, and it'll be a lot easier and less intimidating, but a fun way to learn how to crochet and add beads.